Um, so this here is an email sequence. So instead of an individual email, I have a sequence here, which essentially was set up on the sequences. Hey there, this is Marlon from MarlonMatPherson.com. And in this video today, what I'm going to do is share with you some of my best tips for setting up Fluent CRM. So if you're doing this for the first time, it can be a little bit overwhelming. It's got many features and many options in there. And um, I've worked out a few things that works for me. And what I'm going to do is talk you through some of these things so you can apply the same things that I'm doing if you have a similar setup or if you're looking to do a similar setup. Now, if you're new to my content, welcome. My name is Marlon, as I've mentioned before, and I do content like this to help you with your online strategy for your website and your online content so you can grow your business or brand online. So feel free to subscribe and check out some of my other content and stick around until the end. I'll be sharing with you one of my best free resources towards the end of this video as well. Now, if you don't know what Fluent CRM is, it's basically an email marketing software that's installed on WordPress as a plugin. So you don't need to use a third party platform like MailChimp or MailerLite or ConvertKit or anything like that. It does have some contact management system in there as well. So your contacts can be saved with notes and stuff like that. So they do have some elements of CRM features, hence the name Fluent CRM. Now there are two versions of Fluent CRM. There's a free version and there's a paid version. The free version, you can install it just like any other plugin from the WordPress repository. Just search for Fluent CRM there. And um, if you are just basically looking to grow an email list, collect email addresses essentially, and send out campaigns individually, then the free version is perfectly fine for that. However, if you want to harness the power of all the features that comes with the pro version, so automations, all the tagging features and the um, extended automation or advanced automation features you need to go with the pro version and i'll leave a link to where you can get that in the description of the video also you can head over to this post here to have a quick look at the website for fluent crm to see what the differences are there's a handy chart that basically runs you through what you get on the free and the paid version now just to show you i've got both installed the free and the paid version however only the free version that's actually active right now. So if I go to automations, I'll just show you some of the features that you would normally get on either side and which ones are available. So say you want to start an automation here, you will see the options that you can use to trigger an automation. These would be um, if a tag is applied to a contact or removed, or if a list someone's been applied to, uh, or added to a list or removed from a list, then these are how you can start. And none of these are available in the free version. The only thing that's available in, free ver in the free version to start a new automation or to trigger one is to have a form submitted from Fluent Forms. Now, Fluent Forms is another product from WP Manage Ninja, which is the company that basically owns Fluent CRM. They do install a light version of Fluent Forms with Fluent CRM, so you're able to put together your um, opt-in form with a name and an email address or just an email address. So if a form's submitted, then you can start an automation here, but you can also do WordPress triggers. And there's one available in the free version, which is when someone registers or signs up within WordPress, the standard account creation process. I would imagine I haven't used this personally. Um, then they would start, you can start an automation based on that. Or you can start an automation if you have the pro version, when someone logs in, maybe for the first time you want to send them a series of emails, then this is how you could use that. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and activate the paid version so you can actually see that it all opens up once you've activated it. Now I've already downloaded it and manually uploaded it to um, my um, website here. You'll see that the options are now available for me to use because obviously I've got the pro add on there. Now, when you first install the plugin, it's going to want to take you through a wizard to set up several key things that you're going to need to have. Now, I've skipped out of it already and I've not actually activated or set anything up, but you'll see from this little section here on the dashboard that is saying, we need to go through these five steps, right? So create a tag, um, import your contacts, create a campaign, 
um, create an automation and create a form. Now I'm not going to go through every single thing here because there are lots of setup videos that show you how to do everything and you know go more in depth. Um, so what I'm going to focus on is basically the strategy behind what you need to set up. Now let's start with um, lists. So if we take a look at the contacts tab here or menu item here, you'll see it has lists. So we need to click on that basically and you can see that I have no lists um, set up at the moment. Now depending on how you run your brand and how you run your business, you might have multiple things that you do. Now, if you're focused on one subject area, you don't want to necessarily have, you don't need to necessarily have multiple lists because if everything is all related, you can set up one single list and call that your main list, for example. And essentially you'll be able to segment the list based on tags. So essentially you would just create one single list and you call it whatever you want. In this case, I'm going to call it main and just hit the update button. Now we have a list. Um, we can basically bring in our contacts and so on. Now, once you've got your list set up, what you want to then do is set up some tags. Now, what tags do is it allows you to identify individual users or groups of users so that you can target your campaigns more specifically. Now, you may not know what tags you're going to need. So what I'm going to do is actually give you a list of tags that I think you should probably start with. So then you can import your contacts based on these tags and it makes it easier for you to target them or when you have people sign up or take certain actions, they will automatically get tagged and that's how you would set things up based on automations and so on. So the tags that I recommend is that you have um, something that says that they requested a free item. So let's say you have a lead magnet or something that they sign up for. You want to make sure that you know that they've actually um, requested this so you want to associate that to them with a tag if you just have one thing that you offer as a lead magnet then you could just have it as requested freebie or requested lead magnet but if you have multiple which you should because you want to be testing different things to see what converts best is you can have the name next to it so you'd have the tag as requested checklist or requested whatever the checklist is or downloaded this file so then in future, you're able to identify those people. So another type of tag that you wanna have is interest-based tags. So if say somebody is interested in a particular topic, you want to make sure you tag them with that. So with interest tags, you're able to then tailor your content to the right type of people so they are more likely to interact with it and take action. Another type of tag you might want to have is a purchased tag for a specific service or product. This way you know who's already purchased and you don't then advertise to them or send them offers with discounts and things like that because then that can cause a problem. The fact that they've already purchased and you're now discounting the product and trying to sell it to them as well and offer it to them. Now active sequence, this is what I call it, is when I have someone going through a series of emails so this could mean that they're going through a welcome sequence or something similar. And I don't want to send them out any other emails whilst they're going through that sequence. So that way they don't get bombarded or get distracted from the point that I'm trying to get them to within those sequences or that sequence. So once they've completed the sequence, then I just basically remove this tag. You can automate it to remove the tag and therefore you can send them other emails this brings me to broadcasts. I also have this, which is where I tag people to say that I can send them broadcast emails and broadcast emails are like your individual emails that you would send out as opposed to a sequence that they're going through. So say I have some new content or some kind of offer that I want to send, then that would be um, where I write a single email and send it out to the list and that's classified as a broadcast. Now to set up a tag is pretty straightforward. You just hit the create tag button and let's call this uh, broadcast. And it's as simple as that. So we just go through and set up each individual tag. Now in terms of sequences and automations, I'll explain the difference. A sequence is where you have a set of emails that go out one after the other based on a delay that you've set up. And you just put those together as one group. Um, and then you could bring those into an automation which triggers those emails or that group of emails, um, which can sound a little bit confusing. Um, what I'll do is I'll show you an example on one of my live sites here 
of what an automation looks like with sequences or a sequence inside it. So on this site here, somebody downloads or gets access to a guide, which is a PDF, then what you'll see here is that they get sent an email immediately. This is not a sequence in itself. This is just an individual email that says, hey, here's your item. I'll just open that up. So in here, it's telling them here's their item and it gives them the link or links to give access to the guide and several other resources. So that's the first email they get. So once they do that, this immediately happens. Now, after that, then there's one thing or two things that can happen. Either they already have um, downloaded this. If they've done, downloaded this before, they'll have a tag that says, oh, they've accessed this. Hence why I have my tags set up the way that it's been set up. So I don't want to necessarily send them through an email sequence that they've already been through. So if they already have the tag to say they've got this item, um, I do nothing, basically. Nothing else happens because they've already gotten this email to say, oh, here's the link. So maybe they've lost it for some reason and so on. But if they don't, which is what most people are going to um, be, which is going to be the case for most people, if they don't have a tag to say they've downloaded this already or they've requested it, then they will go through this section here. So this is sort of like a filter that, you know, splits things off. Um, so this here is an email sequence. So instead of an individual email, I have a sequence here, which essentially was set up on the sequences. So if I open up email sequences, let's just do that in another tab here. You'll see that I have this sequence here that contains, I believe three or four emails. Currently it's three emails, right? So this is what's going to happen. They're gonna be sent this one out after 30 minutes. Then after a day, they're going to be sent this one. And then after two days of, you know, the original um, trigger, then they'll get this other email. Now you can have as many emails within a sequence as you want. But my recommendation is if you have just a few emails and you don't really have um, a massive campaign that you're running, you could just run, you could just send out individual emails as a custom email inside automation and not actually do any sequences. I've done this um, like that before and it works fine. The only reason why I've done it like this is because I wanted to be a bit more flexible with how I approach this email funnel or this particular system. Now, one thing to bear in mind is that if you trigger, if you have an email sequence like I do here, you have to put a delay after it. Otherwise, what happens is that this only counts as one action. So essentially what would happen is that this would get triggered once. However, the emails, as you've seen, would need to go out over a few days. However, instead of waiting for those emails to go out over the few days, it would jump to the next thing here that needs to happen after immediately and not wait for those emails to all go out. Because as far as the system here is concerned, um, it's, it's only one thing that's here right because it doesn't know that it's a sequence that needs to wait for all those emails to go out so i've put a three-day delay which corresponds with the number of days or the number of emails that need to go out essentially which is one per day and then i know that i won't be doing this next action which is to add a tag and this tag is saying basically that they've completed the sequence and now they, it adds broadcasts and it says completed sequence. You haven't seen this tag in my example, but I add one to say they've completed that particular sequence, starter guide sequence there. And I also remove the tag that says active sequence. So this way I know for sure that I can now send these guys broadcast emails. So when I go to a campaign to send out an individual email, I can just select send to my broadcasts. And what that means is that no one will get that email unless you have that tag applied to you. Now at this point, nothing else happens because as you can see, there's nothing else down here. But if I wanted to add these people, add them into another sequence or I could take some other action. So the possibilities are endless here. 
Now, essentially, this is what I wanted to show you with the tips and the strategies that I have. So then it gives you some idea of what to do when you're going to set yours up. If you've got any questions around any of what I've just showed you, leave them in the comments below. And you can also reach out to me on my website, marlonmatfresson.com. Now, I did mention that I'll be sharing with you one of my best free resources in the form of my tools list. So I have a list of tools that I've created that I use for my online content, as well as my websites. If you want to get access to those or that list, head over to marlonmatfresson.com slash toolkit and you'll be able to jump in and see those tools and utilize that for your own online strategy as well. Thank you for watching this video and go ahead and check out one of my other videos on screen now or linked in the description and I'll speak to you in the next one.